Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look and comparing my original GTC tow truck with my brand new Buckle tow truck. It's been two years since the first tow truck came out, so we'll see what I've done different, what I've done better, maybe things worse, and kind of discuss that. Now where this started, or where the origin of this whole topic came about, was on my Discord, so make sure you join my Discord, link is above. Um, it was recommended that we don't have a tow truck, and of course, I referred them to the original GTC tow truck that you see here, but when I started thinking about it and looking at it, really, you can't compare. The series, unfortunately, in my opinion, is drastically outdated, and I'll be explaining why, and we'll be taking a look and comparing these two tow trucks. Now, first, I want to mention, obviously, the style of the two tow trucks is different. They're different model, different model years, different generations, and different brands altogether. Obviously, the GTC is a knockoff of GMC and Buckle is a knockoff of Chevy, technically owned by the same company, General Motors, in real life. So there is some styling cues that are the same, and you may find them specifically with the cab. There's only so much I could do with this upper part here. So the upper part on my newer trucks, the roof line is you know, identical, but what is different is the mirrors, for example, and the body line, especially the front, the grill area. I think on the new truck, they're much more up, out, updated. Whereas here, it's just kind of boxy. Like I didn't really have much of an idea of how to change the style of the front of the truck. So it's just like a full on box or cube. Whereas here it has much more of a defined kind of streamlined shape while still being kind of a boxy truck. Getting to the back of the tow truck, obviously the mechanism, that's a big factor here. This one just kind of, I mean, I do like how it looks. It does look very 1980s, let's say. Whereas here, it's like a modern tow truck, what you'd see nowadays for smaller vehicles. Inside is a huge difference, so I'm just going to turn off this for now. So when you turn on the truck, the logo comes on, and then you have the speed, the gear. You have a little array of indicators here, which is nice. The hood release. Now, these trucks did not come with a modular hood. So this was before the modular engines were out. Sorry, I said modular hood. Modular engines. So this is before the modular engines were out. So while it does have a hood that opens up all you see is a bunch of batteries and whatever it's not too great you have your two-wheel drive low heaters down there beacon indicator was what it has here i found out after some time that usually the beacon indicator doesn't really work as well on land-based incidents handbrake power some gear in the back i do like how the layout of the dashboard is to be honest like i do like the little um screen here and kind of these two little indents i do think that does look pretty good as far as styling goes dome light is on already so that's the inside cab if we hop in here to compare the new style turn everything off so you can right away see that the inside is different i mean it does have the handlebar the handlebar that's famous on chevy vehicles I won't say the name because it's a swear word, but that's what you grab if you're about to go off a jump. Turn it on. The display and everything is much more clean in my opinion. Like the way that this all works, it has the mood lights. It just uh, looks much better. And of course, here we have an automatic transmission with manual mode. Whereas over in the other one, we just have manual transmission. So that is something that has been updated and worked on for a long time. We still have gear in the back. Here we have a transfer case, which we could set um, rear wheel drive or front or a four wheel drive. First aid kit in the glove compartment as always. The sensors, the, the compass is there. We do have our button for Alta gates and the dome light. So much more modern and simple interior and we do have a pistol under the <laughs> dashboard if you ever get into trouble and our hood if we release that 
you could see that it's a eight cylinder modular engine so it looks much better in my opinion when you're looking at it also as you could see with the flashing lights on the old one it's just the roof ones whereas here we have I turned it off on, the, on that one, but it was just the roof one. As here we have the indicators flashing in the front and back. So hopefully people will get out of the way and not cause an accident. So that's all this. Now if we go to the old one, we have enable tow connector, which is I'm guessing this guy here. Yeah, or disconnect rather, that's the wrong word. Winch maggle the fork maggle, and then you could lower this, which is pretty cool. You could raise this, winch up, winch down, and the maggles. Oh, spotlight, sorry, maggles are here. Bed light and spotlight. Here we have fuel and battery, so that's useful. Now what I found is that to prevent this pivot from moving, I put these ropes. If you detach the ropes, you can end up pushing this what I call the fork side to side. So now it moves, whereas the ropes are forcing it to not move. Um, I did devise a better system on the newer truck and I'll show you that in a second here. So that is the rear here. This one also, while it has more of that kind of triangular shape, which is common on tow trucks these days, it has some stuff in the back, which we'll get to in a bit. So first things first, I've linked this connector with this, so now it's no longer kind of swinging freely. So what you first have to do is release that. And what that does is it releases the winch slash trailer. So technically you could lower this and use it to pull a trailer if you're trying to recover a trailer, but now the system is active. See this button, release under lift pivot. That's what releases that instead of the ropes over there. So now you actually have a button. Uh, I also found the proper way to call it instead of a towing fork, which I called that one. This is called an underlift. So if we lower the underlift, it drops down. Yeah, it does lift up the back of the truck just a little bit, but you don't have to go all the way down. That's in case you're on a hill or an incline, so you could make sure it touches the ground. So here we have it. It's down. Obviously, like I said, if you take this off, then you could now push this left or right. Or if you press this button it connects it back boom moves up and down much in the same way as the other one and it has your winch up and down controls as well as the boom and uh, under 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 lift mag magals are there and rear spotlight and work light is here as well so everything is on this one area we could turn off the power to this whole mechanism if we want so that's this system here. Now what I do have in the back, which is why I decided to call this vehicle a tow truck and recovery vehicle is because it's not just for towing, but also for repairing, as you have all these repair things. You have a cable anchor here, so if you need to charge up a vehicle that has low battery, you could plug it in and charge it up. And on this other side, behind there, is a hose which I'm gonna show how it works in a second. So let's spawn these two trucks with a car to tow and see how it works. So there's not much of a need to show how the old tow truck works, but what we're gonna do is use it to demonstrate how we can charge up the battery and charge up the fuel. So say you have a vehicle that's you know disabled, there's no fuel or no battery, like I just showed you, come here, plug this into here and plug it in to charge it up. And then you can see that it's charging up. Obviously, it's siphoning the battery from this truck, so you'd have to keep the engine on. But we can get it a bit of a power boost. On this side, if we take our hose, you want to plug it into this hose connector and into this. And right now it's zero fuel, but we do have a nice little fuel tank back here and a hand pump. So if we start pumping, we see that this starts to drain. And there we go, now we've pumped out all of our fuel. This one here is used to fill up this tank again. But as you can see now, we're at 168. So 
that actually worked. We filled up some fuel in this in this uh, truck that we can recover. And there you have it. So say we need to tow it. Obviously, look at the size difference. So it's a bit of a, call it a heavy task to use this small truck to, use, to tow the big one, but we'll give it a go. First things first, you'll want to disconnect the winch and lower the underlift. Then you want to hop inside and watch when you put it in reverse. It's actually showing a view from the top of the boom. The camera is right below, right above the winch there. So it gives us a good view of what we're looking at. And we can go right underneath it. There we go. Put it back in park. Now that that's attached here, you can turn on your underlift magals and you could turn release this. So now it's actually going to be able to steer. Now that would be enough to tow, but just because I prefer to be extra cautious and not lose a truck that's under tow, we're going to lower the winch and attach the winch as well. And then you could jump over this and grab the connector and put it on the other side of this. There we go. So that whether it was a car or not, it doesn't matter. You just lower the winch to how much you need. Last thing we're going to hop in here, turn off the handbrake because that's going to prevent us from towing, obviously. So now with the handbrake released, we should be ready to go. We could lift the underlift up a little bit, or we could try to use the boom, but you'll see if it's a heavy load, your, your actual tow truck is going to start to want to lift. So it's not recommended to, like, that's why we have these little wheels. It's for actually towing heavier loads than what this truck is capable of, and or rather heavier loads than this truck itself. So we don't have to try to balance it up there, but instead you have this little assembly. Let's take a look. We'll hop in, put it in drive. We can even turn on the towing mode and let's be off. So here we have it. We're towing the bigger tow truck. And if you turn that little pivot will actually let you rotate your load. So you can make it around bends and turns. You heard that disconnect. So if you do turn too abruptly, it will want to disconnect, but that's why we also have that top one and it does just uh, reconnect for us. You obviously don't need to use the low gear mode. That's maybe if you're towing something very heavy. In this case, it doesn't really need it, but there we have it. So that's how the tow truck works. Hopefully everyone has enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more and note that this tow truck will hit the workshop as soon as I'm done uploading this video. So I hope you guys can enjoy this. Like I said earlier, join the Discord. Uh, there's suggestions. That's where this tow truck came from. I originally was not planning on building it today. I had other things in mind. But when I heard about that we didn't have a tow truck, and of course the Alta fleet is growing so big and they need to maintain their vehicles, so what better way than to have them maintain their own vehicles with using a tow truck to carry them when they need to be recovered. So, well, join the Discord if you want. Let me know in the comments what you think of this creation and stay tuned for more. As always, happy Stormworksing.